Hey y'all, have you ever wondered what the different responsibilities are for the positions on the board? We're gonna talk about that today. Let's get into it. Hey there, this is Tiffany with Boss on the Budget. I help new and small nonprofits get up and running. If you need help with your nonprofit or you know someone who does, please subscribe to this channel and also share this channel so they can get information because I drop videos every week. So today I'm gonna to share three common board officers that you'll find with nonprofit organizations. And be sure to stay to the end of this video because I'm actually gonna share one tip. So one helpful strategy that I've used to convince people really to serve in these offices because in many states there are different offices that are mandated. So you wanna make sure that you have people who are willing to serve so I'm going to share one tip that has worked for me when you're trying to convince people to serve also if you have questions about how long should board members serve on the board including board officers be sure to check out this video that I did on board term limits and also if you have questions about should my family serve on the board because that's a question I get all the time make sure you also watch my suggested video that I did on should family serve or can family serve on your board all right, so the three most common officers you'll find with nonprofits are the president, or sometimes it's called the chairperson, the secretary, and the treasurer, all right? So this largely depends on what state that you're operating in or the state that you incorporated in. Because you're going by state law in many instances, they often set like the minimum standard. So you really should be aware of what that requirement is before you kind of go out there and start recruiting people and getting your nonprofit up and running. So I'm just gonna quickly share what each officer does, what their responsibility is. And this is just general information. I really recommend that you take this information and do more research so that you're really aware of what each person's role is so they can be more equipped to do the job. And so that you know for yourself if you're a nonprofit founder or if you're just on the board, just so you, you're well informed about what you all are supposed to be doing. So let's start with the president or sometimes called the chairperson. And you may be wondering, is it the same thing? Sometimes I see people called president of the board, but is it the president of the organization? What is it? So when I'm saying president, I mean president of the board, the person who's kind of the leader of the board, which sometimes is referred to as a chairperson. And depending on your state, they may refer to this person who you may think is the chairperson as the president. A lot of these words are interchangeable. So that's why, again, I really recommend you do your research in your state but states often don't mandate that it has to be called the president or called the chairperson but just check to make sure and make sure you're using consistent language and you're not confusing people so the job of the chairperson or the president is to run the meeting to set the agendas for the meetings and to make sure that the meetings are effective. They also are responsible for making sure the board is working together as a, as a whole. They are managing the relationships of all the different board members and they're a, a key person to make sure that the board is functioning as it needs to function. This person also is a key partner with the chief executive officer or sometimes they're called the executive director. So they work hand in hand to push forward the vision of the nonprofit. So this chairperson, you, would, you really need a person who has good interpersonal skills, is a people person, can manage tough situations, is not afraid of tension and conflict, and can make everything work together. Now I'm just bringing up some of the key roles and responsibilities, but there are also other specific roles and responsibilities. I recommend, again, you do your research. See, I'm trying to push you to learn and do your research. Um, there are great resources like Board Source or Board Effect. I'm gonna drop those links in the description box below so you can do more research for yourself. So let's talk about the secretary. So the secretary's role is to ensure that the meetings are organized and to ensure that everyone is prepared for the meeting. So if there's any pre-work or any research that people need to do or read before they come to the meeting so they're prepared to make decisions, the secretary just needs to make sure that everyone has what they need. The secretary also is responsible for maintaining the official records of the organization. There are many records that you just should never destroy, including your meeting minutes, 
um, for your organization. So that person helps maintain and organize those official records. And even though that this person may not be actually handling all the records or organizing everything, they are overseeing that process to make sure everything is in place. The same thing goes for meeting minutes. Usually it's the secretary that is responsible for ensuring that the meeting minutes are done. But in a lot of organizations, other people are responsible for doing the minutes, but it's the secretary's responsibility to make sure they're done. And oftentimes it's required that the secretary actually sign off on those meeting minutes. So that's that person's responsibility to make sure all the records are done completely and they're adequate. So the treasurer is another key position. And even though every single board member has responsibility to ensure the financial health of the organization, the treasurer in particular will oversee certain things related to financial accounting and financial management. So they will help ensure that the audit process is done and in place. So you may require an audit once your budget gets to a certain size or once you are pursuing certain types of funding like government funding. They'll also make sure that there are financial controls in place to avoid fraud. They also oversee the, the budget and the financial statements to ensure that the board has what they need to make key financial decisions. So again, depending on how you're set up, the treasurer may not actually do the budget or actually put the actual numbers in, but they're ensuring that it's done and that it's being presented to the board. So again, like with the secretary and the president, there are other roles that the treasurer can play, but I'm just giving you some of the most important roles that a treasurer plays um, for your nonprofit board. So I know your next question is, well, are there other roles or other offices I should know about or should be aware of? It really does depend on, again, your state law, if they require a different position and just the, the setup of your nonprofit. And some nonprofits, there may be like the sergeant of arms and some nonprofits, there may, may be a vice chair or they may be co-chairs. So a lot of that depends on what your state law allows and just the particular culture of your board and how you approach your work. But I just wanted to bring up the particular roles of the president slash chair, the secretary and the treasurer, because those are the most common positions that you'll see. So I promise at the end of this video, just to share a tip to help convince people to serve, because a lot of times people get nervous just inviting people on their board. Just that alone, just being just a regular board member, makes people anxious because they're like, well, I'm not paying people for it and I don't want to bother people and I don't know what to do and I don't know how to engage them. You don't want to approach it that way. My advice is if you're trying to get your board engaged and you want people to serve on certain positions, my advice is to provide education early and often. When people know what they're getting into from the very beginning, they're much more likely to be a better fit and they will actually stay longer if they know what their expectations are. A lot of times when you're asking people to serve on the board, there's no real indication of the monthly commitment, what they're at being asked to do. And, you know, in face value, it may seem like, yeah, I'll serve on your board. You need me to help make decisions, decisions and show up every now and then. Of course, People are not going to really turn that down because they don't understand. But when you provide details about, okay, well, this is going to be a certain number of hours each month. And in your role as president, I'm going to support you through this process so you know what to do, what not to do. I'm going to give you resource guides. I'm going to give you cheat sheets so you know how to run the meeting so you're comfortable. People are way more comfortable when they know what to expect. They, they're way more willing to try and say, well, I'll try the position to see if I can do it. And once you get people there and you support them in that position, then they're able really to fulfill the role. So my advice to you is if you're trying to get people to serve, make sure you provide that education and preparation early and often so people are clearly aware of what it takes so they can make the best decision possible. And lastly, if you need help recruiting people for your board of directors, I have a board recruitment toolbox. It's in the description box below and it provides helpful templates and tools to help you find the right people to serve on your board. Don't forget to check it out. And also, if you have questions for me or if you need help getting your board prepared and you, you need my advice or my assistance, please don't forget to reach out to me at www.bossonabudget.com. And I will see you in the next video.